But the Paven Smith at Batman, it was a curveball that Palante just left hanging there. And if if you get a curve, a spinner that that finds that much of the plate, it's like it, it's it was just a, a rainbow on a tee is really the way it was. And Palante talked about after the game, that's a pitch that he would like to see lower. He's trying to almost have that underneath the strike zone. Honestly, if you execute it perfectly, maybe that's a chase pitch for uh, a spot in a two two count. Where you do, he said, I had a ball, uh, one ball to play with in a 2 2 count. I want that to be lower. And he just, he knows he botched the execution of that pitch. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a bad spot to have it happen. Ollie Marmel said the same thing. It's just a, a spinner, a curve that he spun up there and it, it, it hung up there. And uh, bad, ti- bad timing for it, obviously, but it is uh, something that happens. Uh, and Palante, I think, will be doing everything in his power to, to try and correct it. Uh, so, like, my thought is. I don't blame Ali Marmel, and you're going to probably hear that going, oh, of course, Brendan's caping for Ali again. But in this case, like, historically, that is what he has been. He's been a guy that can, uh, against left-handed batters, get the job done for the Cardinals. Uh, that's why we talked a lot about in spring, maybe they would need one fewer lefty because they could almost use uh, Palante as a pseudo left-handed relief pitcher uh, in those situations, and they have, especially with runners on base that want to bring him in. Runners on base, less than two outs. That is an opportunity against a lefty for him to get that ground ball and it turned into a double play. Maybe where I would, would say the Cardinals um, treated this like maybe a blanket scenario of, okay, does do we check the box of runners on base less than two outs, uh, force out at any base, left-handed batter up? Okay, Palante. Maybe they just check that box. But specific to Corbin Carroll, I mentioned he's a guy with six stolen bases on the year. He is going to be a hard guy to double up. And so even if you get... Uh, a hard ground ball, it may not be a guarantee to go 4-6-3 or even 6-4-3, whatever the case might be, to get out of that inning unscathed beyond the run that was allowed on the, the Flaherty homer. So that might be the one spot where I would go, yeah, you maybe could have gone a different direction than that. And they had to get him ready in advance. And Ollie said these things happen quickly, and so that's why you've got Palante warming up early on in that inning, not because they thought, you know, Jack Flaherty looks like he's laboring. It honestly didn't go that way. Jack Flaherty looked tremendous. And then he didn't. It happened very quickly with the home run, the double, and then the walk. Three at-bats later, you're bringing Palante into that game. He'd only thrown about 13 pitches, I think, because it was 77. I looked up on the scoreboard, so it was either 77 or 78, depending on if they posted the final one of the sixth. And then 90 pitches is is when Flaherty left the game. So about Baker's dozen, uh, that's all the time that it took for things to get out of hand for him in the seventh after he had been absolutely cruising. And so... I do want to say that's my takeaway is that Jack Flaherty is going to be in a great, great spot, I think, moving forward. Um, but didn't get it done tonight when it comes to the box score because he's charged with four runs. But, man, you got to remember this. He was not on the field for the last of those two runs. And I, I again, I'm not going to repeat what he said. Um, but if you saw the gifts, if you saw uh, the, the broadcast, you could read his lips and know that there was a, a pair of expletives that came out where he was not happy to be taken out of that game. Um did say after the fact, though, and I was going to play the clip for you, but uh, it's it's kind of short. No, actually, I will. I'll go ahead and play Jack Flaherty talking about being removed from the game in that spot. Uh, and then, you know, obviously a, a little bit of a reference to to uh, the reaction when he did depart. But you can hear from Flaherty, and then we'll play a couple of the other questions. Um, you'll, you'll get a sense, I think, for Jack that he was not in the, the best of moods about the way the game unfolded. But, hey, neither was, uh, was Cardinals Nation. So here's Jack Flaherty after his start tonight. You want to say again? You want it, look like you want it to stay in there. Yeah, I mean, there's never a point where you ever want to come out of the game. If you do, you probably shouldn't be playing this game. Jack, how do you manage the frustration of pitching well and not seeing the results that you want, both in the box score and the final result? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. I, you want to say again? How do you manage your frustration when you know you're out there pitching and executing well, but it's not necessarily showing up in the box score or the final you just result? Keep, you just keep pitching. You just keep focusing on making pitch after pitch. That's all you can do is continue making pitches until um, it's your time to come out of the game. So that's all you can do is continue to make pitches one after the other until it's your time to come out. So, I mean, for me, that's all I can do is continue to make pitches. Outside of the end result, do you feel like your stuff was better? I know, you know, you've been trying to work on some things along the way. I think I pitched pretty well. All I can do is continue to make pitches until it's my time to come out of the game. Sorry, Doc. The, um, the pitch to um, Orte was up, but did you feel like the pitch to Gurriel was down? It was low and in. It was a good pitch. Uh, I, I mean, 
I don't know why we're focusing on like the two pitches of the game that like the the pitch to Marte, he beat me backside, okay. Um Guriel used to want to be aggressive and, and fill up the zone. Um and he put a good swing on a pitch. So there was Jack Flaherty after the game, and you could maybe tell a little bit of the irritation. Uh didn't love some of the questions. But I mean, for me, he, he says, Why are we focusing on the two pitches? The, the the two pitches are where the game changed. You know, and and it is true. He should get his due for the the many, many great pitches he made uh previously in the game, but where things began to unravel, not only for Jack, and, and he didn't get a chance to finish that out. And so that honestly could be where a lot of the frustration is coming from. Like, I got myself into a bit of a jam there. I wanted to be able to work out of it, and he probably feels like he has the pitch count uh, to be able to to be given some leeway there, and he's only at 90 pitches. You know what he said coming off the mound. And so there's probably frustration there as he's answered some of these questions. Um, but, you know, he's not going to say that, and nor should he. It's probably smart to just say, all right, you know, my emotion or whatever it was coming off the mound, that's one thing, but I'm not going to gonna rip my manager or do anything like that in, in the post game, And so – that leads to him sort of just repeating the same lines that you heard over and over, which I get it. That's uh, that's that's a way to make sure you don't say anything that you you wish you hadn't said in the heat of a frustration after after a game like that. Again, I think he pitched really well. I think there were a few pitches that uh, you know he might wish he had back, or you could tip your cap to the opponent and say that's where they got you. Uh, but at the same time, those are the pitches that that are going to have fans talking and have uh, media probably asking questions after the game. And so that that's just the nature of what it was. Uh, can understand the frustration, though. To pitch as well as he had, I think he pitched this is the best he's pitched all year. And the results are worse than several of the outings that he's had this season when you consider uh, the four earned runs. And then to not have an opportunity to maybe work your way out of it, he's talking about wanting to. And I, I, cut, I cut off the answer there that he gave, um, but he would continue to, to go on and say, that at that point, you're just trying to manage the inning and say, how can we limit the damage to, to just make sure it's the one run? Even after you get a man on second base with the double, trying to figure that out, and then you walk the next guy, but that's still the goal is he's he's in gamer, gamer mode trying to figure it out. Um, but all he takes the ball, gives it to Palante, and uh, you know the rest is history. I don't think it's a crazy decision to, to go to Palante, as I mentioned, with the lefty setup. But the one thing I will say is, and I, I think I started too earlier and then sort of trailed off and wanted to give you the Flaherty audio, um, a situation where I feel like if you're looking for a double play, maybe difficult to get it against Corbin Carroll because of his speed. And so if you're looking to get that one out there, and then maybe you can say we can get the ground ball to get out of the inning, the strikeout might be the thing you go for. And I think Jack is the guy that has a chance to give you that compared to Palante. Um the ground ball could have certainly worked out with Palante. You just take the out at first, the runners move up, and then you get one more, and you're out of the inning. Uh, but then when he when when Palante walks the first guy, I mean that that puts yourself in a really bad position. And then he hangs the curveball instead of getting it below the zone. I mean he wanted that to be right below the the strike zone, below the belt. And so on that pitch, it, it's safe to say he missed his location by multiple feet. And uh, and and you saw the reaction too. I tweeted out the screenshot from Bally. A Flaherty just kind of looking out and, and uh, you know, has the eyes going, wasn't happy to see it. Cardinals fans weren't happy to see it, right? Like, but if you're the guy that was responsible for two of those base runners out there on the pond, you're thinking, man, I could have done that, <laughs> right? Like, I could have given up the, the game with another home run. Um, and so I, I think just frustration of not being able to, to be given the leeway to see yourself through a moment like that. Uh, on a day, too, where, where Flaherty really had pitched so well. Frustrating. And, uh, you know, Cardinals fans are frustrated. Jack Flaherty's frustrated. Andre Palante's frustrated, right? Like I said, like he wants to be uh, nailing down those spots like the Cardinals have been able to trust him to do in the past. Uh, but all the way around, it was a struggle tonight for the Cardinals, and uh, that, that's why they end up where they are in another 0-1 series hole uh, for the sixth, seventh time. However many series they played, man, that's how many times they've started down 0-1 in a series this season, still have not been able to win an opener.